Hey guys, so today we are going to be doing a full face of favorites that I have been neglecting. And I, I need to apologize to all of this beautiful makeup that I have <laughs> that I have not been using. Um, as you guys know, I, I just, I review a lot of new makeup, but it was just, it was kind of time. It was time to kind of revisit old favorites. And I am working with Nordstrom on this video. All of these products you can find at Nordstrom. I will link to them down below. And speaking of Nordstrom, their anniversary sale is still going on. So I'm actually wearing the Zella Lux pocket sweatshirt that I purchased. You guys, I'm sure you guys saw that anniversary sale haul. I got this in two colors and I am so excited that I did. So I'll leave the details for this down below as well. Um, but it is such a gorgeous sweatshirt and it's got pockets. You guys know how much I love pockets. And this material is luxe for sure. I think maybe you can tell in the lighting, there's like a little bit of a sheen. Oh, it's so incredible. I think this colorway is moonbeam gray. And then I have a deeper gray color which is really nice too, but I wanted to put on a lighter color because it is still very warm out. Um, but this has been like the perfect layering piece because it, like AC is just a full blast here in Vegas. So um, even sometimes at home, I'll like get a little bit of a chill and I'll just throw this on. It's so, so nice. But come the fall winter, this is gonna be absolutely perfect. So anyway, just wanted to mention this Zella t-shirt and follow up with you guys because I know I did that haul, but I really haven't talked much about the products that I actually haul. So anyway, this is a big, big winner. And yeah, I just love it. There's one more color that I'm thinking about getting. It's like a forest green. I may get it. Anyway, let's move on to my full face of neglected favorites. So I'm going to start with uh, foundation and concealer. And I'm mentioning them both at the same time because this is from McCrean Actives. And this is the brainchild of Dr. McCrean, whom I follow on Instagram, and she's really, really incredible. Anyway, I'm gonna start with the High Performance Tinted Moisturizer. I have it in the shade Medium. She has since extended her shade range since I first purchased this many moons ago, I think when this first came out. And the light seemed too light for me, and obviously the deep seed too deep for me. Um, but she has since come out with, I believe, three more shades, which is really, Awesome. So hopefully this medium is fine. It looks a little bit deep for me these days, but we'll see. We've got a great pump here. So just a quick word on this. It's right on the bottle here, but there's 37 plant-derived actives in a buildable lightweight tinted moisturizer. It's micro-free, talc-free, clean, vegan, paraben-free, phthalate-free, sulfate-free, fragrance-free, and non acnegenic, scientifically proven and dermatologist tested to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, reduce the appearance of blemishes and spots, smooth skin texture, and soothe and hydrate the skin over time while providing buildable coverage as makeup. So needless to say, I'm very excited to be using this again. I can't believe I haven't been using this more often. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some of this. And because it's just a tinted moisturizer, I am really hoping that this medium will work out for me. I do remember thinking it was um, really nice feeling on the skin. It really felt more like I was applying skincare versus makeup. Yeah, I think the medium is fine because it is tinted. I think if it was more highly pigmented, it may be a little bit too deep for me. And you can see that it has very light coverage, which I personally am a fan of, but let's, let's do the uh, apply to just half of my face here so we can compare. So I'm just applying another light layer here and it looks like it's building up quite nicely. Yeah, everything I remember loving about this foundation or this tinted moisturizer, I should say, is definitely true. I just really love the way it feels on the skin. And I do love what it's doing to my skin too. Super smooth. So this is two light layers and it's doing a really nice job kind of blurring out my larger pores here. Really nice. So this is the side without, this is the side with. You can see the slight coverage there, but really, really natural. Well, I am glad I dug this back out. Really lovely. And if you don't follow Dr. McCrean on Instagram, I would. She's always just passing on like the best knowledge. She's an incredible dermatologist. I believe she's based in New York City, an incredible dermatologist. And I remember discovering her through this line that I found at Nordstrom. Okay, so that's the McCrean Actives High Performance 
tinted moisturizer and I do have it in the shade medium I think I mean I could probably go down to light but because because of the like light coverage I don't think it is that much of a difference so I hope you find that helpful if you use me as a shade comparison or shade reference um, but I'm gonna also use the McCrean Actives high performance concealer and again another product that I really really enjoy it is definitely more like skincare than it is makeup if I remember correctly this was uh, on the lighter side in terms of concealing so I'm just shaking it up because I have not used this in a while and I do have this in the shade light and I'm just going to apply in those shadowy areas there and very very lightweight concealer it's almost like is it a serum concealer no high performance concealer and I'm just gonna use my foundation brush and blend that in yeah it does a nice job kind of like brightening up my under eyes so the light concealer medium tinted moisturizer is a pretty good uh, combo for me all right so I also pulled out a powder that I enjoy and I haven't used in a while I don't know that I need it though um, I pulled out the La Mer loose powder and I remember when this came out, it was uh, so controversial, <laughs> I guess you could say, because it's, you know, it's not quite as nice as the original Le Mer Luce powder. I will say that. But without thinking of that as a comparison, this is a pretty decent loose powder. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a powder brush and I'm going to I think just apply it to the areas where I normally get shiny, so like the center of my face, a little bit on my forehead, a little bit on my chin. And here's what it looks like. It has like a peachy, light, fleshy tone to it, but it really doesn't leave any kind of coverage or anything, at least not the way I use it, uh, very lightly. So just dusting it ever so slightly in those areas that I mentioned. And it leaves this really nice, soft radiance. Again, not quite as nice as the original, but really, not that bad, <laughs> not that bad. Okay, next up for bronzer, I actually can't believe I haven't used this bronzer all summer, maybe once. Um, this is the Sisley Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder. Now, <laughs> you can see how much I have loved it, and I have had this product for a long time, and in fact, they have since like changed the packaging. I think it has like a gold tone packaging, similar to this, but gold instead of uh, silver, and this is like the first gel powder, big gelée type of product I used, and I didn't know how to use it, and it was quite a challenge. I remember when I first got this, probably like four or five years ago at this point, but I love this bronzer for the summertime. It's a little bit on the warm side, so it's not really a bronzer I like using in the fall, winter. I find it a little bit too orangey for when my skin gets really, really pale, um, but it's perfect for the summertime if you really want like a nice, I've been in the sun, I've been vacationing all summer, this is perfect. So um, because it is a gel powder, I'm gonna use like a dense uh, natural haired brush, and it may be time for me to get a new one. Like I said, I've had this for so long, but let's see, it may work just beautifully. And the sheen that this bronzer has is incredible. I mean, you can see it in the pan. It just has this gorgeous, gorgeous, like metallic sheen to it. Yeah, look at how that just warmed up my entire complexion. Isn't it pretty? Look at that sheen, it's so gorgeous. It's subtle, it's subtle. I know in the pan it looks, <laughs> almost looks like a highlight. <laughs> but it's subtle once you get it on your face. Isn't that gorgeous? So that is the Sicily Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder, one of their, I would say, one of their iconic products. And next for blush, I bet you guys haven't seen this in a while. <laughs> this is the Louboutin Face Palette. I love, love, love this face palette. Again, we're dealing with some baked gelée products in there. We have two blushes and then a highlight in the middle, which I will also be using. It's just stunning. Isn't it so pretty? Let me do some swatches here. And like this package is so beautiful. It's refillable. Like everything about this is incredible. And I just haven't, haven't had the chance to use it. So those are the two blushes and there is the highlight. Oh, isn't that pretty? So which blush should I use? I think I'm going to go for the coral. I want to do a little bit of a warmer look today. 
And I'm just gonna grab my Chanel uh, like contour brush. I'm gonna go into this coral shade here. And this coral shade, I don't know if you can see it in the swatch, it has like a golden shift to it. So beautiful. Isn't that stunning? It's like a whisper, a whisper of color. Oh, it's so pretty. So that is the coral shade from this Louboutin face palette. Now I'm gonna go into this highlight. I can't believe I haven't used this in so long. I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier Cheek Color Brush. And just tap that right on, wow. Really don't need a lot of product. Very, very shiny, holy smokes. Very shiny. Gorgeous cheeks, look at that. So like wet and slick looking. Wow, incredible. Okay, this, this may have to stay out. <laughs> kind of forgot, I mean, I knew I loved it, but kind of forgot how much I love this face palette. Mm. Okay, for brows, do you guys remember this? This is the Byredo All-in-One Refillable Brow Pencil, and I have it in the shade Slate. Sorry, it's not focusing. I have it in the shade Slate, and I love this pencil. It has like a, kind of like a teardrop wedge shape, but it has this incredible like powdery kind of application. It's not very waxy, at least not in its application. So I'm just trying to swatch it for you. It's very, very light. But do you see how it looks kind of like dusty in a way? Mm, I love it. So I'm just gonna throw this in. So easy to use, like mistake proof. And then of course it has a spoolie on the other side here. There, easy peasy brows. Yes. Yeah, I forgot about this Byredo eyebrow pencil, and I was using this solely for a very, very long time. I need to pull this back out. <laughs> okay, and for eyes, I reviewed the Valentino Beauty line when it first came out, and this was one of the products that I really, really enjoyed. This is the eyeshadow palette, and you wanna call it a quad, but it actually has eight shades, pretty cool. And then this, eyeshadow palette I really enjoy. Their powder products are really creamy, really, really creamy. I don't know if it's coming across through these swatches, but they, yeah, they feel very creamy when you, you know, put your finger in there. So that's the top four shades. Here are the bottom four. Yeah, super creamy, just as creamy as I remember. So they're the bottom four shades. Okay, I'm gonna go into this light nude shade the bottom half here. <laughs> I'm gonna use that one. And I'm just going to apply this to like the center of my lid. I'm just trying to get a sense of the shade. It's actually pretty close to my skin tone, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Let me just kind of apply a light layer of this all over my lid then. I'm actually gonna change to a larger brush since I just want an even application of this everywhere. That actually did a nice job kind of like evening out my skin tone there. Really nice, okay. So let's see, I think I'm gonna kind of deepen things up with this brown over here. And I'm gonna use like a fluffy kind of blender brush if I can find a clean one. And I just want like a light dusting of this on the outer corners here. These really, these apply like a dream. This brown is actually, oh yeah, I see it now. I didn't really see it in my swatch, but on my eyes, do you see that it has like a little bit of a purple undertone? Huh, really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna use one more shade to kind of make things sparkle a little. What do you guys think? I'm asking like I can hear what you're saying. But we've got these two up here, silver and a gold, and then we have this beautiful kind of taupey shade. Hmm. Let's try with this taupey shade first. If that's not enough pizzazz, we'll go to, I have a feeling this is like a daytime and a nighttime situation. We'll go to the nighttime <laughs> quad. So I'm just gonna apply this 
to the inner corner and then over towards the center of my lid. Oh, this is nice. It's like a nice like satin finished shade. I like this. Okay. Wow. This actually exceeded my expectations. I do remember really, really liking the formula. I love the colors and everything, but this is, this is really nice. Really nice. Okay. Valentino eyeshadows. Gotta keep, gotta keep using that. Um, all right. Eyeliner. I love, love, love this duo from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Exaggerize, there's a full name, Hollywood Exaggerize Liner Duo. This side is the matte, which is the black side, and then this side is the metallic. I really like this metallic shade if I want to um, like add it to my inner corners for like a little inner corner highlight. This is also really nice in my waterline. I always talk about the Chantecaille Brightening Eye Gajal. I actually have it right here. This is like the perfect shade for a uh, waterline. This is too, but this one has like a metallic sheen to it. So it's even more like va va boom. So I'm going to use this metallic side and yeah, just draw a little bit here, this like inner corner tear duct area, just as a little brightening. And I like using this pencil versus eyeshadow because when I use eyeshadow, I feel like I'm getting it everywhere. <laughs> Just not, not that good with it. So this allows me some very precise application. And I'm gonna take the matte black side and just tight line with it. And I think that's it. I was trying to decide if I wanted to add anything to my waterline. I think I'm gonna leave it. If I use the black, I think it'll be too dramatic. If I use the metallic, I think it's gonna be maybe too shiny. Let's try the metallic. <laughs> I just talked myself into it. So there is the metallic in my waterline. Hopefully you can see the difference, but it's pretty obvious to me. All right, let me apply this over here. All right, I'm just gonna curl my eyelashes and I will be right back to apply some mascara. All right, so the mascara I'm gonna use is the Chantecaille Faux Seals Longest Lash, Longest Lash Mascara. And this is not a forgotten or neglected love because I do use this quite often, but I wanted to use this today because the anniversary sale bundle where you get two at a discounted price is still available. So I thought, let me just go ahead and demo this for you because this is one of my favorite mascaras. It is uh, just, it's like the Goldilocks mascara. I feel like it does just enough lengthening. It does just enough volume. It doesn't, you know, it's not clumpy. It doesn't do anything like overly dramatic. It's just like the perfect everyday mascara and it never smudges, runs, anything like that. And it has peptides in there to help your lashes grow. And as I'm using this, I'm reminded to tell you that I love the texture of this mascara too. It's like, it like clings to your lashes, but it's not sticky and it's not too gooey and it's not too wet. I really don't like mascaras that are too wet because yeah, I just make a mess. So anyway, that is the Chantecaille Faux Seals longish, lo Longest Lash Mascara. I'm never gonna be able to say that right. Okay, um, and then next we have lipstick. I have so many of the Byredo lipsticks and I pulled out one that oh, I just remember falling, I remember you know, doing this try on haul for you guys and I fell in love with the shade and I just haven't used it that much. This is La Flame and this is a matte lipstick, but their mattes are really creamy feeling. So here's La Flame and we're gonna put this on right now. Okay, there is La Flame. It is so, so good. I have so many of these reddish orange lipsticks and this one leans just a little bit more orange. I just love it. And like I said, there is a matte finish, but it just feels like a cream lipstick on the lips. Oh, incredible, incredible. I have to leave this out too. 
Wow, okay. Last but not least, we're gonna use a finishing powder because I have not taken out my Sisley loose powder. I think they've changed the packaging on this too <laughs> since the time that I purchased this. Um, but I have this uh, Fito Poudre Libre uh, loose face powder with hibiscus flower extract. I have it in the shade One Irise. And I remember it, it definitely was a learning curve on how to use this loose powder, on how to use loose powder in general and then how to use this particular loose powder because I like it much more as a um, finishing powder, which is what we're gonna do today. Um, in terms of a setting powder, I just think there's, there's too much going on in this powder for it to be a setting powder. If you use too much of it, it ends up being a little bit thick, a little bit heavy on the skin. There is uh, like little metallic bits in this powder, like micro glitters. Um, and so I like using it as a finishing powder with a buffing brush. You guys know how much I love this combo and really buffing it in. So I am going to just kind of turn this, well, kind of turn this powder upside down just to get a little bit out of there, just that much. And I'm gonna stamp it here on my cheek and then I'm gonna buff. And if you don't buff, you're gonna have a pretty micro glittery <laughs> uh, powder just kind of sitting on your face. I really feel like this powder shines when you work it in. Otherwise, yeah, it's just this kind of like layer of powder and I'm not a fan of it. And I remember when I first got this, you know, people were kind of raving about it. And I was like, this looks terrible on my skin. Like all you could see was this like film of powder on my skin and I just didn't get it. And then I used it as a finishing powder, buffing it in and it's so much better. I hope, I hope you can see like how smooth this looks. It has a very, very similar effect to the Guerlain Meteorites, which you guys know I love using as um, a finishing powder in the same way, you know, buffing it in, but it really doesn't take much. And I definitely, I don't like this powder like underneath my eyes or anything. Again, I feel like it's just too powdery, but when I buff it on kind of like the larger planes of my face, my cheeks, my jawline, my forehead, oh, it looks good. It looks really good. All right, that is it for my full face of neglected favorites. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> but I'm so glad that I whipped this stuff back out because I love, love, love all of this makeup. This lipstick, the Louboutin face palette, the Valentino eyeshadows, the McCrean Actives um, tinted moisturizer. I mean, this stuff is so, so good. And I just need to just be a little bit more cognizant and kind of use the wonderful things that I have in my collection. Anyway, big thank you to Nordstrom for working with me on this video. Let me know you know, like what some of your products are. I hope I've inspired you guys to kind of dig through your collection now and kind of use some things that you loved and haven't used in a while. Let me know what some of those products are down below in the comment section. And subscribe down below if you haven't already. I will see you in my next video.